Today, I'm going to show you three types of fur and color pencil, long, short, and curly in a step-by-step -step basis. Welcome, my name is Jessica. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about art tips and tricks and other arty things, this channel is just for you. So the first type of fur that we are going to go over is short fur. And with this short fur, I am going to demonstrate this in the fur that you can kind of see from the reference photo. It is kind of a light sandy brown color. And with doing this short fur, the very first step that you want to take is to get that base color in. And that's what you're seeing me do there, is at first I just took a, um, a cream color to the paper and got a good even coat of that color down first. And now I'm going over it with a uh, light brownish color. It's kind of got some yellow in there too. And I'm going through and just making light strokes over the cream base color and I'm deepening this base color with these light colors first. That's one of the keys to making fur look realistic and especially with colored pencils. Colored pencils, you wanna make sure that you're always preserving the whites of the paper. So that means working from light to dark and slowly darkening it over time. So I'm building in that good base layer of multiple colors. As you can see from the reference photo, this fur has a lot of different shades of brown in there and yellows. So as time goes by, I'm going to make sure that all of my strokes are in the correct stroke length. You don't wanna make strokes that are too long or too short either. You always wanna make sure that they're consistently the same length or that won't make your fur look very realistic. Going in and just, I'm darkening up those strokes, making sure that some of those areas are uneven. As you can see from the reference photo, that some of those areas have more consistent strokes of the same color versus others. So I'm going in and just making some uneven patterns because that is one of the things to fur too, is making sure that it isn't all a consistent shape going on. Fur has inconsistencies. Now I'm going in and I am doing the second step in drawing the short fur, which is adding dark colors. I'm gonna go through and slowly add in those darker areas of the fur, making sure that I am doing appropriate stroke lengths and another thing to consider when you're drawing fur, and when you're doing short fur in particular, anything that's longer and more like hair, you, this isn't going to be useful. But you want to make sure that each stroke that you make isn't exactly uniformly parallel. You wanna make sure that they're kinda going out in just slight different directions because not all fur grows in straight lines. And especially on animals, fur tends to grow and kind of protrude more or go to other angles depending on the bone and muscle structure of the animal. So that has an influence in which way the hairs are going to go. And this particular strip of fur came from a cheek of a, I believe it was a German Shepherd. So I just went through there and added some more of the base color to get that more accurate in the end. And that was it for the short fur. Now we're going to do some light fur. This is our second set of fur out of the three that we are going to be doing. With doing this light fur, I'm going in there with just a light gray color and I'm trying to get that in as the base color as you can kind of see from the reference photo here that it is very light almost white fur 
when doing light colored fur, you'd be surprised how many other little colors are actually in there with it. It's not just straight white. So with these gray colors that I'm choosing, they have different shades of other colors in them. That's why you have your grays that say warm gray or cool grays. That's because the warm grays have warmer colors to them. Reds, oranges, and yellows. Whereas your cool grays are going to have blues and purples. So I'm going through and just getting in those shadows first, getting those colors in there very thoroughly, mixing up both of my gray colors that I'm using here. And one thing about light fur that might help you out is trying to get in there and do your darks first. Light fur isn't really as dark as, you know, brown or, or black fur, where it's easier to preserve the paper. You don't have to worry about getting it too dark. So going in and getting those darks in first is going to help you judge your values as you're working on the fur. Because I feel like lighter fur is a bit more challenging than the other colors of fur out there. So getting those base layers of darks in first is going to help you out in the end judging all of your values and making sure that everything lines up and looks the way that it should be. And now I'm going through and blending out my base layers for the dark areas. I've gotten them as dark as I can using the colors that I'm using as the base layer. I'll go in and add some darker colors here in a bit and some other colors that I feel like are in the fur. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm going through and adding the um, second layer of darker colors in there. And this would also be somewhat your second step in doing white fur would be to add those darker colors in next. And with light fur, there's really no need to add black in there, which that would be my third step that you would do is to add black last. But with light fur, as you can clearly see from the reference photo, there is no black in there whatsoever. I'm going back in with some more cream, some more of those grays. Getting those colors just right, adding in some highlights because I want to preserve some of those white areas. So if I go in with just a white colored pencil first, I can preserve the white of the paper better as I'm adding other color strokes on top of it. And now here is that official second step adding darker colors over your lighter colors. I'm going very, very light with this, just, just barely touching the paper because it's only just a hint of that dark brown. I don't want to put too much in there. Of course, if you add too much on lighter colored fur, there's not too many layers there that's going to kind of hinder your ability to erase it later. It's much easier to take off the top couple of layers on lighter fur than it would be for maybe dark browns or black fur. And there you have it. It's almost done. Just added in those few darker details and now I'm going through and adding in some more grays. Just trying to get some more cool grays over on that side where there's more shadow than it being light. And as I'm working through this, you can kind of tell that I'm, I'm burnish blending now. I'm not really blending with the solvent anymore. And there, it's all finished. So on to the third type of fur that we're going to be doing in this tutorial, which is going to be curly fur. And with this fur, I'm doing this in a black color. So to start off with this black fur, I am going in and getting some of those details in there. So I'm sketching out with my black colored pencil some of the shapes of the fur 
because I want to make sure that I get as much of those in there as possible. The more you can get sketched in of curly fur or fur that's kind of more like hair will help you out in the long run because there are so many little details and shapes to work around that you kind of need to map it out really good first so that you don't get lost in there later. And I'll tell you, there have been plenty of times I have done some long fur and I have gotten lost. It is so easy to get lost in doing longer fur because, especially on a larger animal, because it's so much of just the same stuff. So I've gotten that blocked in there and now you see me, I'm going through and just starting to add in some colors. I'm adding in kind of a purplish blue because uh, dark fur, believe it or not, actually has colors in it. It isn't all just straight, uh, just a single black pencil. There's going to be either purples and blues or there's browns and reds. Sometimes yellows too, but mostly it's kind of a reddish brown or your purples and blues. I've got those layers in there with just that one colored pencil and now I'm going back through and re-darkening some of the areas and I'm gonna get ready to start blending it. And yep, here I am, I'm blending it. Depending on what type of uh, method you are using for blending, may or may not make doing fur a little harder for you. And then of course there's paper too. I am using Strathmore's Bristol Vellum and that works really, really great for burnish blending and solvent blending too. As long as you aren't doing too many layers for blending with solvent. So I'm going through and blending it just to make sure I'm getting it really, really good into the little crevices of the paper to make sure that all of those whites are gone. And with this, you wanna make sure that you preserve those white areas again, so that you can save those later for doing the lighter colors of the fur. You definitely don't wanna go in and get everything all dark first. Working with colored pencils is all about making sure that you get your color on the paper kinda of almost precise to where it should be in the final image. I blended that one side, and now I'm working on this next side while that side dries. Drying time takes anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how much solvent you used. And now I'm blending that side so that I can wait for it to dry while I go in and add some more on the other side. So I'm going back in and I am re-darkening. This is still the second step in this process. The first step was of course getting those base colors in, which there really wasn't much. That was just getting in some blacks in the areas that are going to be very black in this fur. And then adding that purplish color. And so you wanna keep repeating step two, which is adding those dark colors over and over again until you get all of your darks consistently with your reference photo. And with doing this, when you're drawing long curly fur, you wanna make sure you get those strokes in there in the direction that they should be going. With each strand of this, this fur that's like almost like hair, you wanna make sure that you curve it around and get those shapes that you sketched out earlier. You don't want to go in weird, odd directions. And with doing this, you wanna make sure you stay with them correctly and don't do those extra little stray hairs just yet. Always save the last little details, all those little stray hairs for last. Now I'm going through and adding in some of those lighter gray colors to the highlighted areas. So I'm kind of darkening them slowly, just adding that base gray color. And I'm not sure which gray color I'm using. It might be a cool gray, it looks like. 
And then I'm adding some more purple in there to it because there is somewhat of a purplish hue to the highlights in that reference photo. There I am again, darkening out some of those shadows and other areas of the fur, and I'm going to blend it out. Being very, very careful with this blending to make sure that I do not smudge those dark areas that I just applied more dark colored pencil to and smudge it onto my lighter areas of my fur where my highlights are going to be. Because if you add too much dark in there, you, you can't erase it very well. So then your highlights won't be as strong. Adding another layer, getting those just, just slightly darker. And now here I am adding in those little highlights and little teeny details that go into making this fur looking realistic and wonderful. This is my absolute favorite part to do by the end of my fur is this little details here and there, just those little hairs. The two hour full real time version of this tutorial will be available on my Patreon once I get that launched very soon. It will include a list of the colors I used, supplies, and the reference photos for you to follow along with me. If you would like to learn more about colored pencil tips, you should check out one of these two videos.